Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about something that I don't really see get mentioned all that often, and that topic would be why the Brachiosaurus happened to be sick in the original Jurassic Park. So before I go any further, I feel like I need to make it clear that if we're only looking at the film as it currently stands, there honestly is no answer or explanation as to why the dinosaur wasn't well in the first movie. Now, there are a number of different things surrounding this particular scene that could give us some clues as to what was going on, but I really want to stress the reality that we really don't get a concrete answer in the first Jurassic film. And the reason that ends up being the case is that, much like the sick triceratops scene that happened earlier in the movie, it seems that what was actually important for the filmmakers to dwell on was the fact that the animals weren't exactly doing so well, and not what precise minute detail was really causing them to be in such bad health on the island. Of course, with that sick triceratops scene, the explanation actually does exist, but only in a deleted scene, where Alan and Ellie learn that the trikes eat small stones every six weeks in order to help digest their food. You can actually see Laura Dern holding one of the stones right when the storm hits the island and the main group splits up. When the Triceratops would eat these stones, they would just so happen to accidentally ingest some of the poisonous West Indian lilac berries that were on the ground, which is why their sickness was so incremental and not a constant state of illness. But going back to the Brachiosaur in comparison, there isn't really any sort of deleted scene in particular that explains their colds like there is for the sick Triceratops. However, there is one interesting bit of information that could give us some sort of idea on why we don't get an answer in the final movie. If you actually take a look at the shooting script for Jurassic Park, there exists what is called an omitted scene that takes place right after Lex is covered in snot by the dinosaur, and right before the follow-up scenes that occur in the movie. Now, in reality, I have no idea what this omitted scene could possibly be, but I think the likeliness of it being that Brachiosaurus cold explanation can't be ruled out entirely until we actually see what David Kep wrote here. It could very well be nothing and end up as just a pointless scene that wasn't needed in the final film, like the deleted scene where Ellie and Muldoon move Malcolm via a stretcher to John Hammond's emergency bunker. With that being said, I do think that there is a chance that this omitted scene may hold the answer to the Brachiosaurus cold that some fans seek. Another interesting piece of Jurassic Park lore that might have made its way into David Kep's treatment for the movie involves the slow disintegration of the dinosaurs on Isla Nublar. In an earlier draft, that was done by Malia Scotch Marmo, it would have been revealed that all of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park were actually slowly dying. This was due to the animals being genetically bred so quickly and with so little scientific information being known on their needs. Dr. Wu and Hammond really couldn't control a natural lifespan for the animals. They'd created creatures that were a mix of both amphibian and dinosaur DNA through their amber retrieval process, but this had unfortunately proven to be quite a sad and depressing life for the animals. In this earlier version of the script, Ellie Sattler would confront Dr. Wu on some of the x-rays that she'd gone over for the dinosaurs and question him on why he'd lied to her about a dinosaur named Freda being an adult when she was really a juvenile. Sattler could see that her bones hadn't formed properly, and the employees knew about it. John Hammond would luckily be able to explain this to the audience via Injun's usage of growth hormones. In his own words, the billionaire would say, these animals don't lie. Past. There is a regularity and predictability about when they die. It's always very young. We don't know why. Given time, I'm sure Wu will figure it out. Now, the reason I bring all of this up is because I think some of this information could have been still in use and on the table when they were rewriting the script for the final time. And maybe some of the stuff surrounding the dinosaurs' various illnesses on the island would have been implemented through this sort of dialogue. Of course, I do want to reiterate that Jurassic Park was more focused on just making it clear to the audience that there were a great many problems, and the movie wasn't really that interested in exploring 
why these issues were problems in the first place. Quick and exploratory exposition can be seen in a scene like where Muldoon says, What about the Lysine contingency? We could put that into effect. After he says this, we get a great answer from Hammond where he says it's absolutely out of the question. This shows us that Hammond loves the animals and refuses to let them die. However, Muldoon's statement is kind of called into question as soon as Mr. Arnold reveals what that contingency actually is, which is just refusing to give the animals the protein lysine that they can't live without. So essentially, Muldoon was saying, why don't we just sit here for a few weeks and wait for all of the animals to die? Which is kind of a goofy idea to even entertain. In the end, scenes like the Brachiosaurus unexplained cold and the deleted explanation for why the Triceratops was getting sick were eventually used in a very vague way. I think this was done in order to tighten up the plot and sort of just focus on the idea that nobody at Jurassic Park really knew what they were doing. These are dilated. They Take are. a look. It's okay. And not so much as to go into extreme detail on why the dinosaurs were in as poor health as they were in the film. But of course, this topic is still very much so open for discussion, and I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on why they'd think this sauropod wasn't well. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I seriously never want you to ever forget that. Now I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. I'll see you all in the next one, guys, and as always, take it easy.